Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to make a pinhole camera using a coffee tin. A pinhole camera is a light proof box with an aperture on the side. This essentially is made from a pin. Light passes through this hole and projects an inverted image within the box. This method is typically used nowadays for artistic purposes and solography. Did you know on the 25th of April it's International Pinhole Camera Day? I missed it but it jogged my memory that I could get back into some photo action and back to some fundamentals. So from this tin I've got left over from my morning brew, which I can't recycle, I decided to turn it into my first pinhole camera. To get started we need to gather some tools. These can be found around the house, if not can be purchased from a local store. Not forgetting some electrical tape and a scalpel for cutting. I'll start off with the coffee tin itself, making sure it's clean and using a brush to clean off any other debris inside, giving it a good wipe. For taking photos, I'll be using a Ilford photographic paper. I'm going to roughly measure using the seam in the tin to check the size and make the location for the pinhole. Using a pair of measuring calipers, I measure the height of the tin and then I mark where the halfway point is so that I can scribe a rough location where the pinhole should be. This step is the trickiest and we have to pay special attention to. Measuring a pin, it is less than one millimeter. And looking closely, it is 0.6 of a millimeter. I try my best to keep this hole as small as possible for sharper photos. Carefully with the needle, I use a hammer to tap the position where I've marked the hole. Once I punched a hole, I realized there was a slight dimple in the tin. I used some fine wet and dry and sanded it flat carefully so that the hole was nice and round. After some careful sanding, I realized the hole has become bigger. To double check the 0.8 millimeter hole I had made was okay. I used mrpinhole.com and I typed in the figures for the focal length, the pinhole diameter, and the film dimension and film speed, which is ISO 5, which is slow, but it's the speed of paper. And I got all the figures that I needed. Moving on, I started to mask the tin so that I could spray the inside black to avoid any reflections of light. I applied tape to the top, the sides and made sure everything was intact and then used the scalpel to cut open the hole so that the paint can only reach the inside areas. I repeated the same process with the lid. It was a little bit trickier because it was on an inner side. I cut little tabs out and then folded them in order to cover the outer areas. Once ready and masked up, it was ready for paint. Carefully remove the masking tape and check that hole. It's ready. It's nice and round at 0.8 millimeters. Now this is where the black electrical tape comes in. Pull a little bit of the roll and create a tab and this will be your pulling tab. Cover the pinhole and then roll it around about a third of the way. This gives you enough to pull it on and off easily. I'd recommend putting some supports to stop the tape from coming off when exposing a shot. 
With the same process, I made another camera with a 0.5mm hole and marked where the hole was. I also created a stand because I knew that I would probably sit the camera on the floor. Having a lightproof bag on site means that you can change the paper easily. Before going out, I wanted to test fit the paper into the camera so I knew that it would fit okay. For light measuring, I downloaded an app called Light Meter and it's very user friendly. You set the f-stop and then you set the ISO and then it calculates how long the exposure needs to be. Finally, I was able to go out and catch some light and test this camera that I made. Without knowing what results I would get, I went to different locations and set the pinhole camera at many locations with highs, lows and medium exposures at many different locations. Here are some of my results from my initial development of the paper. I looked closer and saw a lot of detail, especially in the high contrast photos. After scanning the images in and inverting them, I wanted to share some of the results that I achieved from a 0.5mm pinhole camera. After shooting a round of slow exposures, I appreciated the fundamental elements of pinhole and how a simple hole can create an image. I also tried some 4x5 film at ISO 400 and it looked promising. So after making and using this camera, I feel that there is a lot of potential in experimentation and trying different films and papers. And I hope it's inspired you enough to make your own. If you've enjoyed this video, do comment below and also consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Ciao.